It's caddis time. Not the big Rocktober caddis yet, but the caddis are starting to hatch, the fish are aware, and it's time for you to get them tied up. So grab your stuff and let's get it on. All right, in the vise today, we've got the FW531 from A-Rex. Same as the 530, but the 531 is barbless. And let's get some thread started on here. And today I've got some Uni 6 aught Camel. And tie this tag in, get rid of it, boom, done. All right, so today we are going to tie a variant on a classic caddis pattern that uses turkey quill for the wing and is a low riding caddis, which for us right now is, is kind of a big deal because the water is very low, very clear, and these fish would much rather eat something that looks a little bit more natural, sits in the water film a little bit better, not necessarily riding on top and bouncing just yet. Those, those big, big dogs haven't, haven't quite hatched. So I'm gonna start here. I've got a saddle hackle that I've trimmed the butt end for my tie-in point. I'm gonna tie that in off the back as my first move. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of space here. I'm not going to tie it right into where I cut. I'm going to leave myself a wrap or two of extra space so that I can get over the next material that I'm going to tie in. And you guys have seen the Rocktober Caddis. And this is going to be somewhat similar. And that will be the variant, if you will. Instead of a dubbed body or anything, we're going with foam. This wing is not going to float the fly very well. It's meant to let the body, again, sit in the film. So this foam is going to do some work. So I've, I've cut an angle here. It's going to make it just a little easier for me to get a tie in. And then work it back down. I'm going to turn this over, make sure my thread wraps are all the way back to the tie in of my feather. And there we go. At this point, simply tie the rest of that foam down and let's give it one more pass make that as even as we can and really secure all right get that thread up behind the hook eye and one thing to keep in mind when we're doing this abdomen here we want to leave ourselves enough room for the wing to come off and then we're going to hackle in the front here so give yourself a good a solid one third of this hook shank for that thorax all right so at this point, I'm just going to turn that hook once and get that first wrap. Now I'm giving a pretty good amount of pressure here because I don't want to eliminate that hook gap, right? So keep that in mind. And then there's going to be my, my stopping point. So I'm going to bring my thread back, leave that one third open, and let's get this foam tied in. All right, about like that. And you kind of want to let that foam roll a little bit as you tie it off, otherwise it'll just cut right through that foam with your thread. And if you're having trouble at that point, maybe switch to a gel spun. Some Vivas would work great, any of that. Boom, let's just clean that up a little bit. And then we're just gonna tie the rest of that foam down. Easy peasy. All right, so now here's that hackle that we tied in. I want to use this as a rib as well as a flotation support. So let's get this going. I don't need it to be really crazy spaced out or anything. Just palmer this up, evenly spaced wraps. And what's going to happen is the quill of this feather is going to act as our, that was convenient, broke the feather and it was still caught hum sometimes you get lucky trim those fibers out we don't want those in the front cleanliness counts when your time flies all right stroke those fibers back a little bit make sure that foam and quill are all tied in at the same spot all right one thing if we leave all these hackles here that fly is going to want to bobble on the water and that's not what we're going for we want that body to sit right in the film. 
So here's the easy way to fix that. Come in and get rid of all those hackles that are on the bottom of the body. So now what you get are these side supporters. This will keep your fly even. It won't let it bobble nearly as much, but it's going to support everything you need since this wing isn't going to be much of a flotation. The other thing I like to do before I tie that wing in, I just come in and zip those guys right off the top as well. And then they don't interfere with my wing placement. All right, so here we have a turkey feather. This is a turkey tail feather. And I've already treated this with two coatings of Artist Fixative. And you could use hairspray. Just give it a good 24 hours to dry between coats and don't go crazy on it or you'll, you'll get too much uh, moisture on there and then you'll, you'll have bumps. But all I'm gonna do is take my bodkin here and I'm looking for a pretty healthy stack or chunk of these fibers because they're not gonna come apart. And I'll decide I want it this thickness and just run this through those quills. So at that point you can see this is gonna be my wing section. So now I'll just get in there with my scissor and get as close to the quill as I can and zip that off. And let me show you what you're left with. So there's my soon to be wing section. And when we get to that point, I will show you what we do with it. All right. So as we showed you earlier, here's our portion of turkey quill that we've already got cut off the feather and at this point I'm going to crease it and fold it over itself and so you'll, you'll kind of see there's there's not a perfect set right it's it's always a little off that's that's fine there's nothing wrong with that if you look at the naturals sure they look very symmetrical but guess what no such thing as a perfect bug and so don't stress out if yours isn't so I'm just gonna place this like so switch my grip to my off tying hand. I'm gonna take a loose wrap around this and then as I come up to take the second wrap, I'll pull down a little and then apply more pressure on that second wrap. And just keep doing this until we get this tied back in to where our other components are tied off. And then we'll have a, a clean connection here. That's not the prettiest look to a feather right there, but it's sure gonna be effective. So now, let me come in the front and carefully cut this out so I don't move that feather too much. I'm going to just open that quill just ever so slightly like that. And I'm gonna come in with my scissor. I'm gonna maintain this angle. If you look at a caddis, they, they known to have this tent looking wing that goes up and then down at an angle. And so I'm gonna keep that angle, give it a little bit past the end of the body and cut. And there's our caddis wing for this fly. And again, don't love this side of the quill, but I think we'll be okay. There we go. Pretty natural looking right there. We are almost done. I know if you guys have watched me tie flies before, anything under three hours is doing pretty good. All right. So now I've got another saddle hackle that I've trimmed the, the butt fibers out there. That's going to be my tie-in. And I'm going to tie this on the side near me. And I'm going to tie it so that the top or convex side of the feather is facing me, facing out. And then the concave or inner side of that feather is facing the hook shank. Trim out that butt carefully. I want to keep this as clean as possible here behind that hook eye. All right. Now, you could wrap this as it is. But, of course... We gotta sneak in a little bit of a spawn semi-seal. And yes, this is going to be some da -da -da, acid rain. So think the smallest amount possible. Look at this stuff just wants to jump on the hook. It knows what to do. So I'm gonna just get a little bit on my thread here. An almost invisible noodle of dubbing that is just gonna give us some highlights underneath that feather when we wrap that all right this will catch light this will put light in between those hackles and that looks pretty natural to fish because they're used to the light refracting and bouncing off those little fibers all right 
slide that down just a touch. Again, this doesn't have to be really perfect. I am going to have too much dubbing. And so I simply pull a little bit off. Nothing to it. At this point, I'll undo one wrap, re-solidify my dubbing on the, on the thread, and there we go. I'm going to bring all that back. Any of these last few fibers, just make sure they're not sticking out in the eye, through the eye, any of that good stuff. Trim those, and we're ready to wrap our hackle. I like to get as many wraps of this stuff as I can. And again, this is just a rooster saddle. Something you probably have sitting around. If not, we can get you set up. There we go. One last wrap, but this is going to be my tie-off. So all I'm going to do keep this clean not get all the fiber sticking over the eye I'm gonna follow with the feather so there goes the thread and the feather now I've trapped the feather and I will continue on that straight line as best as I can and there we go at that point again stroke all those fibers back if you can and get a couple wraps in front and now all you have to do is trim this guy out Pink. Make sure you say bink when you cut that. It helps. Get those last few fibers. All right, looking pretty buggy here. So I got one fiber, not wanting to play. Would it be the end of the world? Absolutely not. All right, finish tying that down. Just a little, little thread head there. I have to trim those two fibers before we whip finish. So you can see, when you're tying these smaller bugs, small thread can be helpful, give you a little bit more space, all that stuff matters, but you do what's comfortable for you. Here we get this whip finish in here. You can already see I've got one fiber trapped on your side there, maybe two, but let's finish and then we'll worry about those. One more little whip finish here, just to get this, this head nice and cute and to give us as strong of a fly as possible. Trim that thread out carefully. Try to not undo all this hackle you've put in there. And these, these little nuisance guys, just trim them right out. Nothing to it. You can refresh your hackle after using your fingers to stroke it back by just coming through with your scissors or bodkin and brush them forward slightly. And now you get that full bushy hackle in the front that's really going to do a lot for your flotation and then let's just give it a, a tiny kiss of some loon hardhead clear and this fly is ready for business make sure you get all the way around there try to avoid getting a bunch of cement in your hackle it's it's not good and that's going to do it for this guy and there you are a little low riding October caddis that is a sure fish catcher. I hope you guys enjoy this one. Make sure you tie a bunch of them because you're going to have so much fun once you throw them on the water. And as always, please hit like, hit subscribe, and we will see you guys on the water.